Okay, it wasn't recording. <laughs> so I say it one more time. Huh? So the topic for today is um, relationships, separation, and everything in between. It's been requested by a very good friend. Has a bit of trouble with his own marriage since a year, but they live separate from each other. And so there is uh, all kinds of difficulties in that. As many, many people actually have these uh, these troubles. The relationship kind of gets sour. It doesn't work out anymore after a while. And then eventually we would then contemplate, all right, maybe it uh, would be good to spend some time apart. And then uh, people spend the time apart and they grow more apart from each other. Of course, when you spend time apart from each other, you grow more apart. And uh, so... A few things that come to mind when, when thinking about a relationship are uh, something to think about regularly every day. There are uh, some thoughts that should be cultivated to let go of, uh, some thoughts that should be cultivated. And um, also, maybe to start off with, how many types of relationships are there? You could say that there are about three types of relationship. There's you, and then you relate to other beings in this world. So there are one class of beings that we relate with, or relate to, they're called friends. Those are all the people that are benefiting you in some way. Those are called friends. Can, can even be your wife or your husband. It is in the group of friends. These are the beings that are friendly towards us, and we consider them to be our friends. You are my friend. Why? Because I get something from you that I like. It's a sort of like a business transaction. I call you friend because I get something that I like in return. Maybe I'm entertained by your presence. Maybe you're kind of a funny guy. And I like hanging around with you because each time you're around I feel funny. I feel happy. So I like spending time with you. I call you my friend. And there are enemies, of course. That's kind of the opposite. Those are the people that go into a relationship with you that gives you harm in, in any form. You don't feel good around them. When they come along, you kind of try to escape. You want to get rid of them. Maybe you have to see them every day, like your boss, and you don't like your boss. This is kind of an enemy, someone that you don't like. There's dislike towards a person. Why is there dislike? Because was, what we are getting from them is uh, perceived as being harmful. Now, the third type of relationship is a neutral person. It's someone that we don't know, a stranger. We don't feel particularly much with a stranger. We're not elated when we see them and we're not feeling uh, aggressive when we see them. None of that. Now all these three types of relationships, they also exist towards yourself. And of course, like everything in life, that always changes. These three types of relationships are almost like a wheel. And that constantly turns around. So enemies turn into friends. Friends turn into enemies. You might have a friendship for years and years. And then one word that is spoken ruins everything. One encounter in anger can destroy everything. Pretty easy, actually. It's one thing that is said. There might be 200 things or 20,000 things that have been said that were really kind... But is that one thing that's been said that was unkind? And that's the one. That's the one we dwell upon and then it destroys the relationship. A friend turns into an enemy. Now each time we see each other is this awkwardness. Kind of just want to get rid of this moment. Quickly move on to the next chapter. Notice you can have these relationships towards yourself too. Some people can be their own worst enemy at times. 
that's also another permanent thing. Sometimes we, we might be our own worst enemy. And then again, at other times, you might be our own best friend. Admittedly, for most people, that's relatively rare, actually, to be your own best friend. Actually, to encounter yourself uh, with love, with kindness, like you just did in the meditation session, looking at yourself through kind eyes, looking at yourself simply with acceptance, with a smile, just leaving everything alone. That's what kindness really is. You just take your hands off. You put your tools aside. You stop trying to fix yourself. That's it. You're leaving yourself alone. You're not here as a bully. And you just simply look at yourself through kind eyes. How would an angel look at you? It's a question I like asking myself because it gives me that feeling. How would an angel, like if I imagine there's an angel that stands right now behind me, admittedly for some people that is a difficult imagination, it's kind of unicorny. But yeah, I, I, I don't like unicorns or that stuff particularly, but that one works for me. The angel, the, the angel imagination works, it does the trick. I imagine this beautiful figure with huge wings just looking at me. Just really receiving me as I am is very powerful. For some people also it's good to imagine how did your mom look at you when she held you in her arms for the first time? Are you looking at yourself like that? Wake up in the morning, your eyes open, bing! I love myself just the way I am. I love myself doesn't mean I like myself and I'm better than everyone else, as conceit. But it really means you're accepting yourself the way you are. There are likable things about every person and there are things that you can dislike about every person. So it's not a game of like and dislike. It's a game of acceptance. And as you come to really accept yourself, all your attributes, all your thoughts, all your feelings, all your emotion, without holding back, you fully open up to yourself like this, then you give yourself a space in which you can heal. Many people practice mindfulness, they practice these kind of concentration techniques and awareness-based meditation techniques and then they're very aware and it's all very cold in, in a way, almost like a hospital surgery room or something like this. It's very sterile, just awareness. But it lacks that very important part of kindness, receiving yourself with kind eyes opening up to yourself, fully accepting yourself with friendliness. And maybe it touches something in you, maybe it does something to you, sitting down, perceiving yourself as a little child, because that's what we are mentally. Our mental body, okay, our physical body, not a five-year-old child, agree, but our mental body is a five-year-old child. And it has a few fancy words to play with. Fancy words are the toys of the mental five-year-old. It can kind of hide behind the mask of fancy words. can say very complicated things and I can make myself look very intellectual, look very knowledgeable and I can be right and I can make you look wrong. These are kind of my toys 
and they all have that one function really they, they are supposed to get me to a state what state do I want what do I really want what state are human beings really looking for just very simple state of being accepted for who you are and being loved for who you are there's nothing as powerful as that that can truly truly change your life if you encounter another being who loves you in such an unconditioned way it can be a shock shock to the system I've encountered beings like this three times in my life or so each time I broke down and I cried seemingly if someone would have seen me from the outside then I'm just sitting in front of a, a Tibetan monk and I just break down crying and I didn't even say anything and th that guy didn't even say anything kind of looks kind of like wow look at that guy this looks like a cult <laughs> maybe from the outside right But on the inside, this big thing has happened in these encounters. When someone just fully accepts you, it's very common actually that you have these enlightened uh, masters that very often that walk through a crowd and then you see them holding the hands of people, just, just grabbing their hands and just staying with them. And people afterwards, they would very often say, I felt like I'm the most special person in the room. Have you heard that before? Like there are people who talk about an encounter with the Dalai Lama or something like that. And it's, what is so amazing is it makes you feel like the most special person in the room. Like there's no one else. It's just you and him. That is the power of, of real kindness, of openness, of spaciousness. That is something so worthwhile cultivating. Forget all the money in the world. It's just trash compared to that. Forget all kind of life situations and problems and solutions. All that. That is really, really powerful. It is so many spiritual practitioners who have been practicing for years and years and years and years. In the end, they would then say things like when they have ripened, so to say, then they would say things like, oh, it's all about love. No matter what tradition, you hear them say that. I have another friend who observed that uh, most of the young spiritual teachers, the younger ones, they are very often talking about awareness and uh, all the, the kind of spacey stuff. Emptiness, not self, all that. I personally like to talk about this kind of stuff. It fascinates me. A certain buzz to it. But essentially, very often in my life, I find that there is a certain basic unhappiness in my practice. And I have now realized something very clearly. That is due to the lack of love. It's due to the lack of kindness. It has to be very, very well balanced. If you ask yourself, this, so why am I feeling so bad all the time? I'm doing the meditation, I'm, I'm putting in the work, I'm mindful, I'm aware. But, yeah, it doesn't take off. And the reason is because you're not kind. It's that simple. It's kindness that puts the meditation to work. Your meditation is like a car, kindness is the fuel. What use is a car without fuel? Where can you go? So this is also not only just the fuel of meditation, but is the fuel of life, is the fuel of relationships, is kindness. What does kindness mean? It means not seeing yourself as the center of the world and everyone else is kind of revolving around me everyone is relating to me but to see it more like an us a we right now it's us in the room 
it might look like we're all separate from each other, but it's not really the case. There's a many, many forces that are connecting each one that is in this room right now, in many ways. There's that one room in this big world, in this gigantic universe, where there are precisely this group of people right now in this room. That is not an accident. There are precise causes for that. It's just we don't understand them, but we can trust. Everything is connected in that way. And we are connecting to other people through our primary state. So you can connect to other people through kindness, for example. You create a wholesome connection, positive uplifting energy between people, if it is kindness. If it is just self-interest, then it's the ordinary, normal human type of energy, which is just about me. What can I get out of it? And then we are fearful, hopeful, in terms of our relationship too, in terms of our marriage. It's not really about us. What do we want? It's about what I want. And sometimes your partner just is with you and sometimes not. Right? If you're not with me, you're against me. This is the old enemy friend thing. That there is no kindness in that moment, there's no understanding, because kindness then enables us to understand. It enables us to see clearly. Man, we're all the same. We all want the same stuff. We want to be loved, accepted, seen, appreciated. Look at two people talking with each other. Everyone wants to be heard. It's very often as you have these discussions, you know, and you see it, you feel it, you know. The person on the other side can't wait to talk. They're just waiting for you to finish because they have learned you need to be polite. Let the other person finish first, then it's your turn. And finally it's their turn. <sighs> Relief. Now I can present myself <laughs> and I can put myself out there and hopefully I get some love in return. That's the, that's the promise. I put myself out there and I get some love. Does this sound familiar? Social networking? <laughs> It's all about that. It's all about that. It, that's why it's so incredibly successful, mind-blowingly successful. Facebook is such a huge company. It's incredible. Why? Because it goes to our most basic need, the need to be seen. But deeper, actually, the need to be loved and accepted. That's why it's awesome to hang out around my spiritual teacher, for example. I love that. It's so nice, you know, because in that moment, oh, I, don't, I don't have to pretend. Actually, all my pretense falls apart. That's at first very uncomfortable, but if I stay with it, and there's this great sense of, oh, it's, it's all fine, it's okay, I'm okay. All that self-criticism falls away, I can actually relax. And that's where the path begins. You can actually relax. And now if you relax, now that's a worthwhile input into any relationship. Your happiness. That is your gift. Your presence. Your, your wakefulness. Your needlessness is your greatest gift. You're approaching another person without need. I don't need anything from you like that. Very refreshing. It, it just is like you're kind of really leaving the other person alone and they will love it. They will want to spend time with you because you have no need. But if you're very, very needy, then usually people seek their distance, right? I remember that when I was younger, I was very needy. I fell in love with some uh, some other girls in my school, and then 
that was very needy, you know. I really, I really wanted her to love me, actually. <laughs> and so that, that was often not the response that I wanted. <laughs> it's, it's not a surprise. The more someone actually grabs you and holds you and tightens their grip, the more you want to run. If someone pushes you, you resist. It's, this is the natural, natural thing. If someone grabs you, you want to get out. But if someone leaves you alone, ah, oh, so nice. And we don't have to really go out and look for people who leave us alone. Just leave yourself alone. It's more easy. Just be kind to yourself. Twice a day, you sit down 30 minutes and just take your hands off. Just stop controlling yourself a break you know accept yeah this is, I'm a human mess and it's fine <laughs> who is not who is not who in this room doesn't suffer who in this room doesn't fear death if it came right now into this door dragged you out by your feet who wouldn't be afraid I would be, I'd be terrified. And so we are all sharing that. This fear of death, the need for love and life. So if we recognize that within ourselves, we start leaving ourselves alone. And that's also when good meditation starts. Every meditation is good, you know. This is a learning process. Sometimes we have to go through these kind of phases where we are like very aware, very mindful all the time. It's, it's good. And then there comes another phase again and you become very kind, very soft. You start to open up. Can you perceive yourself like this? Like... A child, like a little girl, a little boy. How does that feel like? Is it there your inner adult that says, no, no, that's childish, I'm way beyond that. I'm not a child. But yeah, yeah, mentally we pretty much are. Someone takes away your toys, you throw a temper tantrum. It's just a bit more kind of, you know, but you say like a cultivated temper tantrum. You're not kind of completely freaking out like children do. You run around yelling on the street, something like that. You don't do that anymore, maybe sometimes. But you kind of have, you have learned to tame it somehow to restrict it and to swallow it and to suppress it, which leads to a whole new set of trouble. Just to put that aside. It is, this is a whole new set of, of problems there. This kind of feeling like, well, I, I, can't, I can't really be myself because if I am myself, nobody loves me. So I have to be someone that I think would be kind of sociable. So I, I go out and I put on my social clothes <laughs> and then I meet other people who also have their social clothes on and then we're all very social without ever touching one another's heart. To touch a, a person's heart you have to be naked. That's a very scary thought. To be totally naked, no, 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 not me, I can't. To be naked in front of yourself, which also you can say is just honesty. If you want to progress on the spiritual path and you need to get some, the next level, then to see that with just honest, kind eyes, ah, there, there it is, there is need. And that, that's it already, that's spiritual practice, that's it. There's need. It's cute. A human being has human needs. 
There's nothing abnormal about it. You might have a huge mess in your mind, in your heart, you know, like your mind is going around, you have, you have anxiety, panic attacks, like crazy stuff going on in your mind. We all have it at times, some people more, some people less. If you sit down and you allow that to be, you're not resisting, you're not fighting, you will notice, slowly, slowly, it passes, it becomes weaker, softer. And it takes a little while for things to heal. Some things are very tough, cookies, you know. Like very deeply ingrained habits, rock solid. It takes a while. Other stuff then just goes away so easily. Now before we go with another person into a relationship, very important too, go into a relationship with yourself that is healthy. The rest will be taken care of automatically. If you want to teach your children something, have a healthy relationship with yourself. Don't tell them not to smoke while you're smoking. Don't tell them not to get angry and not to lie while you're angry and lying. It's empty words. It doesn't have any impact on our children. Not a real impact. It's, it's a message that's not aligned. The message that is aligned is your kind being. Your ability to just be happy for no reason. Happy and relaxed. Unburdened light. Because you're not picking up anything. You have stopped hurting yourself. And that is a process, it takes, uh, it takes its own time. So that's why I mentioned in this meditation practice, uh, you need trust. Sit down, open up to yourself, leave yourself alone and trust. It means you know it helps. You have this attitude inside, you know you're healing. Because as soon as you nourish your doubt, <coughs> does it work? Does it work? Uh, I'm not so sure if that works. You're right. You're right every single time. So stop nourishing that doubt and nourish trust instead. I know I'm healing. I know everything is fine. Everything is good. I'm sitting down. I'm leaving myself alone. And I trust. That's not what really trusting means, leaving yourself alone. It's scary, maybe at first, like giving away the wheel of the car. but is really, really worth it. Then the thoughts to be cultivated in a relationship is really think about death a lot. It changes a relationship tremendously. I will die you will die. All of us in this room, we will all die at a very specific time in our life. Really allow that to touch you. Feel it. So we're all in the same situation. We're all walking corpses. If you feel that, and each time you say, I love you to your wife, you mean it. I love you to your husband. You mean it. We're not wasting time when we're aware of death. Wasting time with childish attitudes that are a benefit to no one. Not talking about death in the sense of escaping running away from your responsibility to heal yourself and share a healthy version of you with others. It's not about running away from that, but to be aware. Live every day as if it would be your last. So what would you do then? 
would you still cultivate me and my problems? Or would you steer into an opposite direction? That's something that's a bit more beneficial to yourself, to other people around you. That's a big game changer. It's what brought me on the spiritual path. It's what keeps me on the spiritual path. Death. I've seen three very, very close family members die. I've been right there. That's a real human being passing away. And I'll be like this also. Who knows when? Not up to me. Doing my last breath, then what counts? In that moment, does it count how much you have worried in your life and how much you got? Or did it count how much you gave? What you gave? What did you give to other people? What did you give to others today, for example? How did you make other people happy today? Simple question to ask yourself before you go to sleep. Write it down on a, in a diary. So today, how did I make people happy? And then every day, write it down. And slowly, slowly, you will start to change the way you act during the day. Because you want to write something nice in your book in the evening. <laughs> This is not like every day, day after day, it's like empty, empty page. Uh, you just write nothing special. <laughs> you write it in your book, oh, no, nothing special today. But then you start s seeking out, how could I make someone happy now? You start thinking differently. That's how change happens. And that's what we want, small tiny little changing step by step you want to be happy make people happy and it's in your power to do so I saw this beautiful little cartoon one time that uh, you see this this man standing at a traffic light with his son and then another man comes and he stands a bit of further away from them and he has this huge hat and they're all waiting at the traffic light. And then, and then the father says to his son, watch. And the son watches. And then so the father turns around and goes over to this huge-hatted man and says, you're awesome for wearing such an awesome hat. <laughs> and then he turns around and comes back to his son. And you see the guy with the big hat. He's just smiling. He's stand over there. He's still stand over there. At first he looks like, huh? And then he smiles. And so the father says to his son, see, we all have superpowers. It's a, it's a lovely little cartoon. <laughs> but essentially, it's true, isn't it? You can make people smile. You can make them feel good. Go ahead. What are you waiting for? Why waste more of your lifetime not doing that? It's your superpower. There are people who put it to an extreme, you know, like enlightened masters. They go around and they, they are their superpower. They are walking kindness. The walking light, as Andy said last week. A walking light bulb. That's your potential. And you can either stay in, um, poor me, essentially. <laughs> Or you can slowly, every day, start to change a little bit and just keep going because it's worth it. Nothing as impressive as someone who was rock bottom and went up. There's nothing as impressive as that, isn't there? Like imagine your story, your life story. When you're 80 years old, you tell your grandchildren, about the story that you hit rock bottom, you wanted to kill yourself. 
but you made it. Now that is impressive. It absolutely surely is. I had, I had deep depression, I was depressed, I was anxious, I had panic attacks. And then you can share something, I got out of it. Now you have something that is so worthwhile sharing, isn't it? It's your power, what's your problem, how can you serve others? That is getting into, a, coming into a relationship with not only another person in this world, another human being, out of attachment, but it is going into relationship with whoever encounters you every day, into a meaningful relationship. Leaves both of you more fulfilled, a little bit more. So the overall percentage on, on planet Earth of happy people goes up a little bit. The average. <laughs> it just goes up ever so slightly. Thanks to you, I need more people like you. More people who sit down, look at themselves with kind eyes and then share who they are with others. Please don't try to be enlightened. Just be kind. It's good enough, you know. I've been trying to be enlightened for, for long and I'm tired of it, actually. <laughs> I'm really tired of it. I don't want to be enlightened anymore. I just forget it, you know. I just want to relax. I just want to leave myself alone. Feels feels good enough. So many years of trouble, I need to be enlightened. Still not enlightened. What am I doing wrong? Yes. That's in my case, right? In your case, it might be something else. Maybe you're not thinking about being enlightened and struggling like that, but maybe you're thinking about other things. How can I be more... Uh, how can I get rid of them more? How can I be more uh, meditative or whatever it is that you are struggling with? You stop struggling. Relax. Okay? I think that's enough for this, uh, this topic all that come to mind so far. Now...